Okay, it's like a mellow, rainy day, and I got a bunch of new coffees. I need to roast a couple batches to just get the profile dialed in and taste the coffee again, and then send out samples to all our wholesale accounts. So I thought it would be fun to do a little compare and contrast between the San Francisco and the Big Roaster and popcorn popper. A lot of people ask me about home roasting, and a lot of people's journey towards roasting involves roasting at home and then stepping up to a bigger machine, and that definitely wasn't me. I started on larger machines for sure and came from more of a barista's background before I roasted coffee. When I did roast the little coffee at home that I did, it was all on a popcorn popper. This is the West Bend Air Popper. You can get these from Sweet Maria's. Tom is like the big home roasting guy and they're like 30 bucks or something like that. So it's really, really cheap. So basically I'm gonna take this Shikizo from Ethiopia and I'm gonna do a 15 pound batch in the San Franciscan and I'm gonna do a little tiny batch in the Air Crazy and then I'm gonna have everybody do like a blind tasting or blind cupping or brew both of them. Just kind of take a look at like how does the popcorn popper stack up against the big boy. When you open a bag of coffee, you've got the outer layer, which in this case is some kind of plastic. Over here we've got jute, and then inside is this bag. This is a Grain Pro bag. A ton of coffee still definitely gets shipped with no Grain Pro, but it's exposed to so many things during shipping and transportation, and even if it never makes it into bad weather, it just fades a lot quicker. So you get extended shelf life, basically, of your coffee with no flavor loss, and protection from the elements if you go Grain Pro. So. Great, bro. I'm gonna weigh this thing out. I'm starting with 80 grams, which is where Tom and Sweet Maria is kind of recommended to start. If you put too much coffee in the popper, you won't have any motion, so you still want to see the coffee spinning when it's being roasted. You can do some manual shaking as well, which we probably will, which should help even out the roast, but we're gonna start with 80 and see where it goes. I'm also gonna run a seasoning batch just to kind of get the funk out of it before I actually drink anything that I roast on here. I think before anything happens, I gotta get rid of this sticker. That's better. I'm gonna time the seasoning one just to get a vibe on it. It's super messy, there's chaps gonna be everywhere. So if you can do this outside, that's fine. We're in a roastery, so I'm dealing with it. Rolling first crack at about two minutes, 40 seconds. Turn it off. You wanna cool it as soon as possible, so I'm gonna cheat so hard. Okay, batch one is done. The seasoning batch in the popcorn popper and it definitely tastes really dry and not kind of vibrant. I roasted it a little longer than I would have liked to. It started to pop really early. I heard the first rumblings of first crack a little before two minutes, but then it was really rolling by two and a half. I'm gonna drop the batch size just a tiny bit and then definitely stop the roast a little bit sooner and maybe do more agitation. I'm gonna leave the lid on the whole time this time. I was pulling it off so you guys could see, but with this actual roast, I'm just gonna leave the lid on, kind of trap some of the heat in there, and then hopefully make it a little bit more consistent and hopefully a little bit more even. Okay, so I was hanging out and chopping up some footage for what was gonna be the next video, and Chuck hit me up and let me know that I've been nominated for a Spreggy Award. Now the Spreggies are in awards honoring the best in specialty coffee, which is put on by Spreg. Spreg is an online publication that focuses on global coffee news and coffee culture, and to my knowledge, it's one of the biggest ones out there. Now the nominations are by popular vote through Spreg's public nomination process. So that means enough people voted for this channel to have it be eligible for a spreadsheet, which I think is the most badass thing ever. So thank you to everyone out there. And I don't even feel like I'm up for a spreadsheet. I feel like we're up for a spreadsheet together. So I'm gonna put a link down there and if you wanna click on it and vote for this channel, that would be sweet. Not only that, but as a bonus, Cat and Cloud, the company that I run with Charles and Jared has been nominated for two other spreadsheets, one for Best New Cafe and the other for best coffee podcast with the Cat and Cloud Coffee Podcast. Public voting is open now and runs through January 1st, so I was gonna wait to put this video out, but I decided I'm gonna film this right now, stick it in the middle of it, again, link down there to vote, and if you take a couple minutes, vote, and come right back to the video, that would be super sweet. Again, I'm just really pumped. And I just, I just can't help myself right now, you know what I'm saying? So thank you in advance for all your support. I'm so, so stoked right now. This really means a lot to me. Again, link down there to vote and maybe we'll win a spreadsheet together, you know? Could be us, just doing it. All right.
back to the video. Okay, so this was 70 grams. Started in a first crack around two, in a rolling first crack at around 2.30. Dropped it and killed it at about 3.30. So a really, really short roast. And this has been my experience in the past with these, that average roast time was right around four minutes, which seems really fast. It is really fast. It's pretty uneven, which I think may be one of the downfalls with the popcorn popper. If I took it darker, it would probably even out a little bit more, but the other one tasted so dry that I wanted to get a little bit more acidity and hopefully some liveliness to it. If you don't have a huge industrial cooling tray, you can kind of dump the coffee out into a couple pans and like juggle it between two sheet pans. Just keep it moving and try to get some air into it. You want to get that down to room temperature ASAP. I just crunched on a few beans and it still honestly tastes a little bit dry, but it does taste snappier than the first batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the big roaster, roast it on there, do a profile, and then we'll see what happens. Now normally you would wanna wait a few days after you roast coffee to let it degas a little bit before you brew it because what happens is really fresh coffee can taste kinda of sharp and that gas mutes some of the intricacies of the flavors. Pressure is not always better. You wanna let it settle for a little bit. But I taste a lot of fresh coffee all the time and you get kinda of tuned to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and brew these two things and see what's going down. The coffee from the San Francisco was much more multi-dimensional. It had acidity, sweetness, there was like depth to the flavors. It had a lot of layers. It was much more complex. The coffee from the popcorn popper was surprisingly really bright and pretty juicy. It had a lot of acidity, but it wasn't complex at all. It didn't really have any depth. Its main detracting quality was that it had a really, really dry finish and dry aftertaste, almost kind of like Cereally, not lingering sweetness, not the like wet finish that we like. So it was just like hit pretty high up front and then kind of fell off pretty quickly. A lot of the staff said they felt it had more acidity than the coffee roasted on the San Francisco. I actually think that about the same amount of acidity. It was just higher perception of acidity because it wasn't in concert with all these other flavors. So it just had acidity and then kind of fell flat. But I was pretty impressed with what like a four minute roast on a popcorn popper could do. So I think there's really two lessons here and the first lesson is can a popcorn popper roast the same quality of coffee as an industrial roaster and the answer is no obviously you're gonna sacrifice so many things roasting with a popcorn popper so the second thing that I took away from today is like should you even try to roast coffee on a popcorn popper and I think the answer is yes because Aside from quality, the lack of control you have, the most important thing about roasting with a popcorn popper is that it's super fun and easily accessible. You can spend 30 bucks, get a popcorn popper, get some green coffee, and roast your own coffee, and it may not taste as amazing as someone who's got 60, 70, 80, 90, 100,000 dollars worth of coffee roasting machines, but that really doesn't matter. It's just really about the joy of just playing with coffee, accepting it for what it is, it's exciting, you get to hear first crack really well. If you roast it a little darker, you get to hear second crack really well. You see the chaff flying off, and it's just like kind of like an intimate process that you can you can just do. There's no barrier to entry, and I think a lot of people forget that coffee. While you want it to be quality, if you're like a coffee nerd, it should also be fun. And if it's fun to you to grab a popcorn popper and roast your own coffee, you should do that because fun. It's, you know, it's pretty important to have some fun, at least in my book. So that's it. Popcorn Popper versus SF25. Thanks for coming along. Stay dialed, y'all, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace. Dude, this is how burly my staff is. Dude, they're just doing it. Look at that. No problem.